the ultimate Destiny 1 raid experience has arrived, remastered and better than ever in Destiny 2. If you are new to the raid or returning but want to learn the new mechanics, I have you covered. We will go over each encounter, what classes to bring, loadout suggestions, etc. I will not be covering any cheeses as they usually get patched, I have learnt my lesson from past guides. For DPS encounters I obviously recommend Breach and Clear mods, but you might be seeing this guide after Season of the Splicer, so bear this in mind. Make sure to leave a like on this video for the good old YouTube algorithm and subscribe to help my channel out. This is an encounter guide, I have made videos on the chest locations and crystals, I'll link these videos at the end of this guide. Enough talking, let's discuss the first encounter. You will spawn in at the Vault of Glass entrance on Venus, split up into three teams of two. You'll find plates on the left, centre and right of the map. Each team will head over to these plates, stand on these to start capturing them. Once all three are captured, a spire will start forming in the centre of the map. This objective is to keep away Praetorian's Minotaurs from capturing the plates. Wave of adds will continuously spawn to attack the plates. Defeat these waves and make sure any Minotaurs you see are destroyed before they get to the plate. If they come in contact with the plates, the plate will turn red and the spire will deform. Cyclopses will spawn throughout the encounter, one on left, one on middle and one on right. Take them out as soon as you can, as they can one shot you. Nothing really complicated here, bring your best ad clear loadouts, classes don't matter so it's whatever you're comfortable with really. Xenophage is really good for clearing minotaurs and cyclopses. I ended up using a sword for minotaurs in the footage, but really, it's up to you. Whatever gets the job done. Once the spire forms, the door will open, collect your loot from the chest and move on. After you get through the jumping puzzle, you will arrive to the conflux encounter. Similar to the first encounter, you will split up into three teams of two and defend three confluxes that will appear. One left, one middle and one right. The main objective is to stop the Vex from sacrificing themselves to the confluxes. Throughout the encounter, Vex chickens spawn, yes, Wyverns have made it to the vault. If they sacrifice to the confluxes, they will insta-wipe your fire team. So if you see them spawn, prioritise them by calling them out. Overload champions will also be around, so make sure to bring anti-overload guns for them too. Vex fanatics will appear when the Templar summons its legions. This will mark the end of the wave of ads trying to sacrifice. You'll still have to deal with three waves in total. When the Vex fanatics are killed, they will leave a puddle of blue goo on the ground. If you step in this, you will be marked. This will appear on the bottom left of your screen. If the Templar, which is the first boss encounter, which we will cover shortly, performs its ritual of negation whilst you are marked, you will be killed. To avoid this, go to the middle of the map where there is a beam of blue light. Enter it to cleanse yourself. Just stay away from the fanatics and you don't have to worry about this mechanic. You will need your best ad clearing gear again. My top picks are Wither Horde and Deafening Whisper for normal ads. Xeno or Deathbringer for the chickens and Overload Champions for subclasses, Titan Missile with Falling Star will one-shot the chickens, Nova Bomb for Warlocks does the trick too, and Hunters can take advantage of Tethers to generate orbs, or go offensive with Celestial Nighthawk or Star Eaters for Bottom Tree Gunslinger. Once all the waves have been defeated, simply stay alive and you'll have cleared this encounter. Get that loot guardian. So, this is where things start getting complicated, but I hope this guide helps you understand with confidence how to tackle this encounter. Oracles. On screen you can see a map of the room. There are 7 oracles in total. This callout system has worked every time without issues for me and my fire team. We will number these 1-7, to seven, starting from the hidden right oracle and counting the rest clockwise. Use the graphic on screen as reference. What will happen is the following. There will be 5 waves of oracles. The first wave will have 3 oracles appear in a certain order. For example, they may spawn in the following order based on the map on screen. Two, five, one. You'll be shown the sequence twice. On the third time, they will all appear at once. You'll need to shoot the oracles in the specific order in which they spawned. Once complete, a new set will spawn with an additional oracle. Each new wave will spawn a new oracle. If you shoot these in the wrong order or take too long, the entire fire team will get marked for negation. If the Templar completes its ritual of negation whilst marked, players will be killed. To avoid this, meet all players at the centre to cleanse. Don't run in alone or the cleanse aura will disappear, so just before the ritual completes, run in together to be cleansed. 
there will be ads spawning constantly, including some minotaurs and hobgoblins. In terms of positioning, what worked for us was having four players watching certain oracles. For example, one player, such as me in the footage, can watch one and seven at the back. Another can watch two at three near the front right, another watches four just behind it, and the final person watches five and six on the left. The other two can help out with ad clear and hop goblins. The callout system is simple. Using the same example, the sequence 2, 5, 1, if Oracle 2 is the first in the sequence, the player watching 2 will call out that they have the first Oracle. If the next is 5 in the sequence, the player watching Oracle 5 will call out that they have the second Oracle. And if the next one is 1, the player watching that Oracle will call out that they have the third. You get the gist. When it's time to kill the oracles, player 1 will kill their oracle and call out their sequence number, so that player 2 can kill theirs, and so on. The following clip is an example of this method, with audio. Yeah. I'm guessing hidden left is one. Oh! Absolutely. Yeah, I'm second. Yeah, I'm first. Oh, I, could, I could see the first one. Yeah, it, it was me. I could see. I could see the first one. See, yeah, okay. Yeah. One's down. Come on. Um. I have. I think I have one and two. I'm not sure. I'm four. Yeah, one and two. Got five. Two, three. Three, four. Done. Good, well done. Remember, the sequence does appear twice before you have to kill the oracles, and ads can get really annoying, so keep on top of them. Loadouts wise, invisible hunters will be able to get away from ads in order to read their oracles without being pestered. Xeno one shots oracles so make sure you have that equipped. Fusion rifle can one shot the minotaurs and a scout for miners and hop goblins comes in handy also. As long as you keep on top of ads and get the sequence right, you should clear this without any problems. Once oracles are complete, you will face off against the Templar. You'll want all hunters running Star Eater Boots and Golden Gun Bottom Tree, at least one Warlock running well, a Bubble Titan and everyone running Anarchy with Double Slugs. A Relic will spawn in the well where you cleansed in the previous encounter. You will need this to drop the shield that envelopes the boss. You will have oracles exactly like the previous encounter, but only one set of three per damage fez. You can have the Relic Holder watch Oracles 1 and 7, whilst the rest of the group focus on the others. Kill the Oracles in sequence just like before. Whilst all this is happening, the Relic Holder will be charging his or her super attack. Once Oracle sets has been cleared, the Relic Holder will use the super attack to drop the Templar shield. The whole fire team needs to group up on one of the sides near Oracle number 4. Make the Titan pop their bubble at the back, the well needs to be popped at the front and start DPSing the boss. Players might get placed in a detainment field once DPS starts. You'll need to be shot out by another player if this happens. The Templar will then try and teleport to one of five platforms that light up with a ring. The Relic Holder will travel to this platform to stop the Templar from teleporting. They'll keep doing this until the encounter is finished. There are some fanatics in this encounter. Using this strat should avoid you having to get near them. If you do get marked however, go to the center to get cleansed. If you use the recommended loadout, you should be able to kill the Templar within seconds. Grab your loot and start heading down to the Gorgon Maze. The Gorgon's Labyrinth is present here. A special harpy that scans the area is also lurking. If you get too close and are detected by one, it will start a wipe mechanic. Gorgons have a lot of health and the only way to stop the wipe is by killing them. Follow the path on screen to clear this encounter. There are other paths but this one is the one I usually go with and they all lead to the same location at the end of the day.
Once you clear the jumping puzzle after the Gorgon Maze, you will arrive to the Gatekeeper Encounter. Loadouts. Overload stuff. Bring them, as there will be overload champions. You want to add clear weapons. Deafening Whisper is so good for this encounter, as adds tend to spawn in a straight line. Deathbringer is excellent here, as there will be wyverns to kill too. Okay, there is two portals here that are activated by standing on the plates in front of them. Left being the Mars plate, and right being Venus. Start the encounter by clearing the room. There will be an enemy called the Gatekeeper. Kill the Hydra at the centre and the relic will drop. The designated player will then pick this relic up and wait around. Get one player on each side to start capping these plates. Once capped, another player on each side will go into the portals and clear out the room of adds. This leaves one player free to help out with adds outside. Overload Minotaurs spawn near the plates. These need to be defeated or they will try and take the plates from you and disable the portals. Gatekeepers can also spawn in the platform between both portals, so keep an eye out for those, as this will lock the portal too. For the players that are inside the portals, keep clearing adds until a Minotaur spawns. This will spawn either on Mars or Venus. If it spawns on Mars, the player defending Mars will call this out, and the relic holder will head through the portal. When a player goes through a portal with the relic, they get a debuff that prevents them from using portals for 50 seconds. The Relic Holder is the only person capable of dropping the Minotaur's shields. The Relic Holder will kill said Minotaur and drop the Relic. The other players in Mars then pick up the Relic, takes it out through the portal and heads to the Venus Portal. This player will then proceed to drop the Relic outside the Venus Portal, and the player floating will then pick up the Relic and go to Venus. That person will then kill the Minotaur in Venus, swap the Relic with the player in Venus defending, this player then leaves and heads to Mars Portal. The player then drops the relic. The defending Mars Portal player picks up the relic, heads to Mars, kills Minotaur. Okay, I think you get the gist of this by now. Rinse and repeat this until six Minotaurs in total have been killed. Whilst there is a Minotaur spawning in one portal area, a Wyvern will spawn in the other. This needs to be taken down as it will try and sacrifice at the Conflux. If it does, it will wipe your team. If the relic swapping takes too long and the Minotaur sacrifices, this will also wipe the team. Once all six Minotaurs are defeated, a Conflux will spawn in the middle of the main room. All players will head to middle and deal with waves of adds trying to sacrifice to the Conflux. The relic holder will have to deal with shielded Minotaurs here too. The final wave will have three chickens spawn in total. Once defeated, this encounter finishes and you will have reached the final encounter. Okay, so, straight to the point, the only thing that most likely will make you wipe is the oracles in this encounter. A graphic which is about to appear on screen depicts callouts that will make or break your encounter with Atheon. There are six oracles in total. The callouts we used are portal left, portal right, and middle for the ones nearest to the player's reading. And the furthest ones, far left, far right, and spawn. Why? All will be revealed. Atheon will spawn in at the beginning of the encounter. Split up as two groups of three and go to the plates from the previous encounter. Atheon will randomly teleport three players to either Mars or Venus. The players teleported will need to call out where they were teleported to. Based on this call out, the team that is still with Atheon will cap the left or right plate, Mars and Venus respectively. Oracles in the Atheon area will spawn in the sky the Atheon team will need to call out these oracles based on the graphic on screen in sequence of how they appeared. Supplicant Harpies will start rushing the area around the plates. Players can jump up the ledge in the back of spawn to avoid these. In the meantime, the team teleported will need to pick up the relic from where they spawn in. The team will need to kill the adds in the area and head right to the bottom of the room. Here in the sky, they will see three oracles appear. These need to be shot in order the Atheon team called out. There will be three waves of oracles to destroy. All players in the portal area will be marked by the void. And your screen will start turning black. The only way to get rid of this is having the relic holder cleansing you. Once defeated, a buff called Time's Vengeance will appear, allowing everyone to be able to DPS Atheon. The Atheon team will immediately head to the middle platform to perform DPS, whilst the portal team head back through the portal. 
The relic holder will need to cleanse the portal players before leaving through the portal. In the meantime, during the DPS phase, one player will randomly get detained during the DPS phase. They will have a debuff called Detainment Imminent. This player will need to leave the group. Ideally, the detained player can just hide in front of the DPS trap form on the left so a teammate can shoot them out easily. Rinse and repeat this method until Atheon drops like a metal heap. As for loadouts, Anarchy all day long. Snipers for oracles and scouts for harpies and oracles if you run out of sniper ammo. For subclasses, hunters with, yes you guessed it, star eater scales, paired with bottom tree gunslinger, geomag middle tree storm caller warlocks, at least one well of radiance, also would be required for DPS phase, titans with falling star missile builds and one bubble titan. There are other strats such as using double slugs, but it's very risky as you're not going to shoot slugs at oracles sitting above your head. Anyway, if you got this far, you now are equipped to take down this classic raid, which in my opinion is so much better in Destiny 2. Good luck with your clinics guys and girls, drop a like and subscribe if you found this guide useful at all. Catch you in future content and until next time guardians.